Where are we? How did we get here? What's our story? These are some of the questions that cannot be answered by a mortal tongue. To see the story of what we call humanity, our ancestors forged a study into their past. It was named history. History is the study of the past. Knowing your past is crucial to knowing your future. So where did our past begin? This is perhaps history's oldest and most important question. The answer lies in the beginning. We're all started. 14 billion years ago, the observable universe was as large as a strand of hair, being as it was only a few millimeters across. These few millimeters in a very tight group were unimaginably hot and dense. Eventually, the density and heat of the observable universe in this group of tiny millimeters became too much for physics itself to handle, and as a result, there is a huge bang. You may know this as the Big Bang. Two billion years later, the universe had continued developing new masses of astonishingly hot plasma and space gases. Twelve billion years ago from the present, during which many galaxies were being born, such as our galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, were being born violently. An intangibly large cluster of dust and space debris grew so large and so close that it melted its own core. This can be compared to a nucleic fusional reaction. This reaction resulted in a humongous explosion, from which the Milky Way galaxy was born. The Milky Way galaxy then joined in into the other two trillion or so galaxies in our observable universe. After 8.6 billion years had passed, the Milky Way galaxy had gained its own quote-unquote miniature galaxies, including our own solar system. 4.6 billion years ago, our gargantuan cluster of space dust and gases experienced a shockwave from a nearby nova's explosion, prompting this cluster of space material to collapse, forming a nebula. The remaining debris and gases from this implosion created the familiar planets we all know in our solar system. One hundred million years later, rather fast than an interstellar time scale, our solar system became a chaotic arena of colliding planets containing only rocks and flames. Two of these planets collided to form the Earth and the resulting dust, the Moon. However, this Earth was far from habitable, as it only contained an inferno of magma, lava, and superheated rock. Over the course of the next 500 million years, during a period known as the Heavy Bombardment Period, Earth was constantly hit by small to medium-sized meteorites. Many of these meteorites contained liquid ice and, in turn, water. Over 500 million years, this quantity of water became so great that it formed the ocean of Earth. The entire planet was transformed from a volcanic inferno to a watery planet. This sheer amount of water caused the Earth to begin to cool resulting in gases. These gases collected in the Earth's orbit, forming the atmosphere of Earth. 4.1 billion years ago, also during the heavy bombardment period, cellular life, suspected to have come from meteorites, developed in the oceans of Earth, eventually leading to the earliest form of life on Earth, a single-celled archaea. Over the next 600 million years, this group of bacteria would evolve to be able to photosynthesize sunlight. Over 100 million years after this, Earth began to collect oxygen from the atmospheres and oceans it contained, now known as the Proterozoic Eon. As the next 600 million years passed, the Archaea developed after numerous evolutionary changes. Such changes would allow for it to be able to recombine and sexually reproduce under melosis. Life would only continue to evolve and adapt in the time to come. After evolving and adapting to the oceans, climate, and weather of Earth, the archaea we now had were so unrecognizable to their bacterial life forms, they are what we now call animals. Among the first animals on Earth were small worms and the earliest form of aquatic life, the jellyfish. Albeit, these forms of animals were almost unrecognizable to what we see today. Plus, plant life was beginning to appear, although the diversity of the Earth's plant species at the time was very minuscule. As Earth's biodiversity very gradually grew more and more diverse, its animals and plants began to change as well. Evolution once again created a new form of animal, 
vertebrates or animals with skeletons. As time progressed, vertebrates would slowly establish themselves as the dominant form of life on Earth. Also, by this time, Earth had changed from an ocean planet to a planet with land and oceans, as volcanic activity created Earth's first land masses. These vertebrates became the first animals to travel on land. However, this new land harbored a very deadly secret. As the Order of Vincian period had dawned, it would mark a catastrophic awakening. In what is now East Africa and India, which were collectively known as Laurasia, a supercontinent, a series of volcanic eruptions like the Earth hadn't seen for billions of years erupted. This prompted a massive extinction event known as the Ordovician Extinction Event. Over 1 million years of volcanic activity later, lasting until around 445 million years ago, 75% or 3 quarters of the species on Earth had perished. However, this lucky quarter that survived these relentless volcanoes would continue life as we know it. 385 million years ago, plant life also made it onto land and gave rise to Earth's first and most ancient forests. These forests became the center of life on Earth and would only prompt more evolution, creating more biodiversity. However, Earth's atmosphere wasn't prepared for forests and the gases they were about to release, causing a changing climate which over the next 10 million years or until 375 million years ago would begin the late Devonian extinction event. After the slow and deadly end of the Devonian period began the Carboniferous period. By 340 million years ago, Earth's animal life had evolved more to learn how to have eggs, which would rapidly change animal reproduction systems for the years to come. Overall, the Carboniferous period marked a relatively stable period in Earth's history. With the Carboniferous period passed and the Permian period almost at its end, it certainly went out with a bang. As the Permian period became the Triassic period, deep under what is now Siberia, Russia, the exact opposite of frost was accumulating, magma. 251 million years ago, over the range of 60,000 years, steam from this magma chamber reached the surface, causing a massive loss of life because of poisoning. This geothermal activity wasn't about to end anytime soon. Starting 200 million years ago on Siberia's surface, what can be called a supervolcanic eruption teared through Siberia's surface. This eruption covered half of what is now Russia under, at times, a mile of ash, if not even more. This fallout was Earth's largest extinction event, known as the Permian-Triassic extinction event. During this period, 90% of the species alive died out, and only 5% of the animal life in the ocean survived. This was Earth's most violent period. Remnants from this hell on Earth can be seen in Siberia to this day, known as the Siberian Traps. From 200 to 100 million years ago, Earth gained its first true mammals, and its plants had fully evolved to learn to grow flowers and to pollinate, albeit with help from other animals. Earth's life looked completely different from today, yet had a similar biomechanical system to their ancestors from long ago. This also includes humans. As the first mammal in our evolutionary history appeared, it can be described as a rat-like creature. And also by this time, dinosaurs had conquered Earth and established that they were now the dominant species on this planet. However, that wouldn't always be the case. Having lasted for about 85 million years, the Cretaceous period marked a golden age and a renaissance of sorts for dinosaur life. The dinosaurs had amassed a series of genetic traits which is still seen today. However, 66 million years ago, a meteorite the size of Denver, traveling at 30 kilometers an hour, hit into what's now the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. Now known as the Chicxulub meteorite, this is the meteorite that caused the extinction of the dinosaurs. A series of humongous fires and a mega tsunami, which is over 300 feet tall, would devastate the planet and later solidify the extinction of the dinosaurs. However, life on Earth would continue as it always had. 
Humanity has had many ancestors, yet the first one to bear any resemblance to modern-day humans would have appeared 13 million years ago. Known as the Pyrolopithecus catalonicus, it was the first hominid, or ape species, to appear on Earth, marking the first of many forms of hominids that would descend from them. The Pyrolopithecus catalonicus lived in what its name allures to, Catalonia, in Spain. It has also been called the earliest primate ancestor of humans today. Over the next 10 million years, the Pyrolopithecus catalonicus evolved into the rather insignificant Sahelanthropus. It was replaced by another hominid species, the Australopithecus. The Australopithecus was a very important early human ancestor, as not only was it the first hominid species in Africa, but it was also the first hominid species to walk bipedally, that is, on two legs. The Australopithecus also was the first hominid species to use stones for its own advantage, a very important discovery. The Australopithecus went extinct 1.2 million years ago, yet would pave the way for future hominid species to come. After the Australopithecus had begun to decline over a million years in population, a relative of its would take over. The Australopithecus afarensis. This early hominid is one of the closest ancestors to humans today by evolutionary distance. Perhaps the most well-known individual of this species was the famed Lucy, whose remains were discovered in Ethiopia, having been called the first bones of a human. However, the hominids were not yet done evolving. One and a half million years ago, the Homo habilis had asserted its dominance over the other hominids. However, the Homo habilis would be replaced by the Homo erectus species, which migrated from Eurasia. The Homo erectus were possibly the first human species to talk, albeit not in a uniform language and would have sounded like gibberish. Starting 900,000 years ago, multiple species of hominids spread out over the Old World. The most important three of these hominid species are the Homo antecessor in West Europe, ancestor of the famed Neanderthals, the Homo heidelbergensis in Central Europe, and the Homo florensis on the tiny island of Flores in Indonesia. Homo heidelbergensis was the first hominid species to hunt with weapons, that is, sharp stone spears. Starting half a million years ago, the Homo antecessor would die out, leading to the rise of the prominence of their descendants, the Neanderthals. By 450,000 years ago, the Neanderthals had asserted themselves as the dominant hominid species of the European continent. Here, they flourished in population, spreading out all over Europe. Here, the Neanderthals further developed human skills, including use of controlled fire, construction of ancient shelters, hunting animals, and wearing clothes. However, by 40,000 years ago, the Neanderthals had gone extinct for multiple reasons, including disease, parasites, and possibly getting killed off by other hominid species, possibly by our very close ancestors. Ever since the Neanderthals evolved from Homo heidelbergensis, the Neanderthals had a sister genus you may know as Homo sapiens or modern humans. After first appearing in Morocco and northwestern Africa, 315,000 years ago, Homo sapiens, including your direct ancestors, would slowly cause the extinction of their sister species, Neanderthals, of which modern humans have 20% of their DNA from, and our parent species, Homo heidelbergensis. After arriving in Eurasia, specifically Greece, 210,000 years ago, the Homo sapiens would possibly even meet the Neanderthals in person and possibly transmit deadly diseases that would cause their extinction. From this point onward, the Homo sapien, or modern humans, would forever be the final Homo species. Beginning 100,000 years ago, the remaining Neanderthals and the growing number of Homo sapiens would both begin to create their own prehistoric cultures. Such cultures had few characteristics with modern culture, but did involve recording history through painting and occasion orally, likely through a system of grunts, you could call it. From now on, human culture would change and evolve. However, without Neanderthal culture, as they were close to their extinction, by 50,000 years ago, humanity would rapidly begin gaining a lot of the traits we know today. Starting 50,000 years ago, Homo sapiens had almost finished evolving and are considered, quote, the first anatomically correct humans, end quote, today. 
these newer Homo sapiens would begin inventing things, like musical instruments, with the first being a flute made of bones, as well as art and hunting equipment. After 10,000 years had passed, 40,000 years ago, Homo sapiens had completely caused their sister species, the Neanderthals, to go extinct. From here on out, Homo sapiens remain on Earth alone, as the final hominid species alive. 30,000 years ago marked the beginning of human domestication of animals, starting with man's best friend as they have been called, dogs. After selective breeding, we had caused cave wolves to domesticate to become proto-modern dog species. Also at this time, the ancestors of the indigenous tribes of North America, or Turtle Island as it has been called by multiple tribes, had migrated across the Bering Land Bridge into North America, marking the first inhibition of the continent. After the ancient ancestors of the present-day indigenous population of North America had settled the continent, a number of these peoples, or possibly their descendants, began trekking further and further south, eventually reaching the South American continent, marking the earliest period of human inhabitation of South America. Meanwhile, in the Middle East, in modern-day Jordan, humans had invented bread, marking the first food humans had begun cultivating specifically for consumption. Ever since humanity had finished evolving on Earth's surface, its diaspora populations only ever lived in very far apart small settlements with no more than 20 people, if that. This prehistoric way of ancient life was about to change forever. 11,000 years ago, in roughly 9,600 BCE, in what is now the disputed territory of Palestine, emerged the extremely important invention of the city, or civilization. At this time, humanity's first city, Jericho, was founded in the West Bank or Palestine. From here on out, humanity would continue to live and build in new cities, each bigger than the last. As for the future of Jericho, it would reach a population of 3,000, an unfathomable number of people at the time. And even today, 11,000 years later, Jericho remains inhabited as the world's most ancient city. Following the founding of Jericho, and hence the first city's conception, another domestication was about to take place, this time with goats and sheep, making them the oldest forms of livestock of all. Over the next 3,000 years on from this point, otherwise 11,000 years ago to 8,000 years ago, an astonishing amount of domestications took place. This includes cattle 10,000 years ago in Pakistan, cats in the Middle East, wheat in Mesopotamia, chickens 500 years later in, or 9,500 years ago in Indonesia, pigs in Anatolia, and chickens in China, and rice 8,000 years ago in Japan. Each of these domestications would prove to be crucial to the development of human civilization, as all of these domesticated plants and animals are still cultivated and produced today. 100 years after the invention of rice in either China or Japan, a disputed topic, a new era of time would begin, named after one of the most abundantly used minerals at the time, lasting from 7,000 years ago to 5,000 years ago. Roughly, humanity would experience the Copper Age. During this time, many civilizations began switching from stone to copper tools, which is why it was named the Copper Age. During the Copper Age, 7,000 years ago, modern trading was invented. Maize was domesticated in Mexico 6,000 years ago, and horses were domesticated 5,500 years ago in Central Asia. However, the Copper Age wouldn't last forever. Beginning 5,300 years ago, the Bronze Age saw many improvements to existing general knowledge amongst Earth's ancient populace. One of the most important of these advancements of knowledge was amongst the greatest inventions of humanity, numerical systems. Roughly at the very start of the Bronze Age in Mesopotamia, the concept of numbers were introduced in the city of Uruk and would later spend a future civilizations like the Egyptians and the Babylonians. 100 years later, humanity had created its next greatest invention, writing. Beginning in the oldest written script in the world, cuneiform in Mesopotamia, more specifically Sumer.
cuneiform quickly inspired the ancient Egyptians to create their own writing system, hieroglyphics. Back in Mesopotamia, Baruch established the oldest form of government in the world. However, the Bronze Age was more than just these three inventions. 5,200 years ago, a divided and unruly series of political states in northeastern Africa along the Nile River were united by Menes as the old kingdom of ancient Egypt. Having united Egypt, Menes became the first pharaoh of Egypt. From now on, for millennia, ancient Egypt would remain a superpower in the Bronze Age. On the other side of Asia, China was beginning to develop its signature culture, however, would not be united. China during this point is debated to even have had an emperor, but if Chinese legends are assumed to be accurate and correct, then China's first emperor of all time, the Yellow Emperor, was able to become a ruler of a small area of land along the Yellow River. China would become a very powerful empire or a series of empires as time went on. Also in China during this period, compasses were invented to help people ride chariots back in Egypt roughly 100 years later, or in other terms, 4,550 years ago, the infamous Great Pyramid of Giza, as well as the Sphinx and later other pyramids, were built. The Great Pyramid of Giza was built to be the tomb of the brutal and tyrannical Egyptian pharaoh Khufu. 30 years later, the Assyrian Empire was founded in the Middle East by Ashur. It would later on be replaced by the Akkadian Empire. As the saying goes, nothing good lasts forever. After a long 2,000 years of existing, the Bronze Age began to grow violent, marking a time of chaos and calamity. By 4,000 years ago, Europe's first civilization, the Mycenaean civilization in mostly Crete, Greece, had begun to decline for years after a super volcanic eruption at what is now Santorini. China had also, and the other side of the world, gained the Zhou dynasty, but most notably, the world had reached the Bronze Age collapse. For many reasons, some of which being a mystery, the Bronze Age empires and kingdoms all collapsed. Ancient Egypt almost completely fell because of the relentless tax of the mysterious sea people, as they are called. However, they were not conquered by these elusive invaders who we still do not know the identity of to this, to this day. The Assyrian Empire had become the Akkadian Empire already, and Babylonia had been conquered by the Kassites. But the latter portion of the Bronze Age, just under 4,000 years ago, began a reconstruction of the old world and the advancement of knowledge, as well as previously unknown civilizations and cultures. 3,900 years ago, in what is now the northeast Sinai Peninsula of Egypt in the southern Levant, came the emergence of the world's oldest alphabetic script, Proto-Sinatic. An odd fact is that it is hypothesized to have been written diagonally. About 100 years later, the world saw the birth and resurrection of several civilizations, the new ones being the tyrannical Shang Dynasty in China, which loved stoneworking, and the Olmec civilization in Mexico, becoming the first real civilization in the Americas. The Olmec also invented the first sport, having the goal of being hit through a stone goal. The ball used was very hard and was made of very hard rubber. Some civilizations were reborn, such as ancient Egypt under the New Kingdom, with their famous pharaoh Ramses II in Babylonia, just with new leadership being the famed king Nebuchadnezzar in Hammurabi later on, who wrote the world's first law code, many of which still have concepts being used today. This was truly a golden age for the old and new worlds alike. Three and a half thousand years ago in the last six of the Bronze Age marked an era of creation. Two of these creations were very notable, the first of which being geometry by the ancient Egyptians. The ancient Egyptians were phenomenal at geometry for their time. After all, how did they create a series of symmetrical pyramids? Another creation we all still use and love today from this time was music. In what is now Syria, 3,300 years ago, music was invented, excluding the random notes played by prehistoric peoples. This music marked the creation of the world's oldest song, Korean Hymn Number no. 6, for flutes, sheep like birds. 3,050 years ago, the Iron Age had begun, replacing the Bronze Age, but the emergence of this new age marked the beginning of a new religion, Judaism. 
roughly 100 years later, 2,950 years ago, the kingdom of Israel had grown to become a major power in the world, but also in religion through one of its newer kings, the famed King Solomon, who cemented the rise of Judaism. King Solomon then built the first temple in Jerusalem, which will later be destroyed, rebuilt, and destroyed again. Another 100 years later, 2,850 years ago, the world's first real organized army was created by the Spartans of Greece. 50 years later, the first Olympics took place in Greece, becoming the first sporting event and would continue on and off even to the present day. The Iron Age would go on, bringing more inventions to the world. 2,250 years ago, the Persian Empire was founded by Cyrus the Great, and later, the world's first map was created by Greek cartographer Anaximander. By 100 years later, two new religions were also created. One was Confucianism by Confucius, a Chinese philosopher, and the other was Buddhism by Siddhartha Gautama, otherwise known as the Buddha or the Enlightened One. This is also when the Torah was written, supposedly by Moses, according to Jewish legend. Not much later, 100 years after these new religions, came the first school created by Plato, a Greek philosopher. 150 years later, the Great Wall of China was finished by Emperor Qin Shi Huang, or another emperor, and it was built to create a defense against the northern barbarians. However, this would seem useless. After the next 200 years had passed, the mythical founding of Rome took place when Romulus killed Ramus. Rome's power would only continue to grow from here. Arriving 1,950 years ago was a new religion, Christianity. This was with the death of Jesus of Nazareth. Christianity would change history forever. On the other side of the world, in Asia, China was inventing many things such as paper 50 years after Jesus' death and printing centuries later, albeit not printing in the modern context as in Gutenberg. 1,550 years ago, the first true metropolis was created in what is now Mexico, known as Teotihuacan. No one knows who built it, as whoever did abandoned it for no reason, leaving it a millennium later for the Aztecs to gawk at. Two centuries later, the Prophet Muhammad, founder of Islam, died. With his death, there was an initial phase of chaos. However, after this, Islam would establish a caliphate and become one of the largest religions in the world in the final of the three Abrahamic religions and would grow impressively large. 1,050 years ago, the first Europeans landed in the Americas, known as the Norse. These people were led by the famed explorer Leif Erikson. However, they would later abandon their settlement, leaving behind ruins for unknown reason. By 1050, we have reached the last third of the medieval period. The Roman Empire had been long gone due to the invasion started by the Gothic general Odoacer, and Charlemagne had already founded the Holy Roman Empire, which was not holy, Roman, nor an empire. In 1066, William the Conqueror defeated Harold Godwinson at the infamous Battle of Hastings, cementing his claim of the English throne. Also at this time was the beginning of the Crusades against the Muslims in what was called the Holy Land, aka Israel. The Crusades would last for three centuries. In 1120, the Song Dynasty in China became the first in the world to issue paper money, an invention that is still used today. If we travel north of China, we will reach Mongol territory. In 1206, the famed General Genghis Khan founded the Mongolian Empire, which would become the second largest empire in area in history, only beaten by the British Empire. It would devastate those who bordered it. Nine years later, back in England, the mean ways of the current king, John I or John Lachlan, had become too much for a group of people known as the Barons. So they forced him to sign a document known as the Magna Carta, which would greatly reduce the powers of the king, mostly making the king or queen symbolic with few powers and would influence later legal documents. John I later fled England since he was upset about losing his powers and was fe fearful for his life. After 1250, we reach the last six of the medieval period. 
which would last for the next two and a half centuries. During this time frame, many things were invented and many events occurred, such as the invention of clocks in 1283 and eyeglasses. By 1337, one of, if not the most famous African kings of all time, Mansa Musa II, had gained a net worth of what is equivalent to $415 billion in current money, making him the richest person to ever live so far. All thanks to the rich gold deposits in his empire, the Empire of Mali and West Africa, which was not in the present country of Mali. However, North and Europe, things were not so great. In 1347, gerbils on a ship com carrying the Yersinia pestis bacteria infected humans. You may know Yersinia pestis as the bubonic plague, and so the Black Death had begun. From 1347 to 1353, half of the population of Europe, or 25 million people, if not more, had died. When looking at the whole world, possibly 200 million people had died. However, down in Italy, after the worst wave of a black death, life would recover in the form of the Italian Renaissance. This was a time of magnificent innovation, with new inventions left and right. By 1418, geometric principles had been applied to art, thus creating three-dimensional art. Twelve years later, in 1440, Johannes Gutenberg invented the first printing press. China had been doing this for years earlier, although with stamps. Fifty-two years later, some adventurous men joined Cristoforo Colombo, or Christopher Columbus, on a voyage, seeking to find a new way to India for its spice trade. However, after landing in what is now the Bahamas, which he named Bahamar for shallow water, Columbus saw the native Taino people thinking they were Indians. His diseases were caused by an unfathomably large occurrence of death. After this, he caused an extinction event. So many people died. The Earth's climate cooled. Following the transition of the European continent from the 15th to the 16th centuries, a new event began you may know as the Renaissance. The Renaissance saw monumental changes in technology and inventions at the time. In 1510, one of the most important Renaissance figures, Leonardo da Vinci, began creating medical drawings, becoming a pioneer in anatomy. Seven years later, in 1517, the unity in Christianity ended with the famed German reformist Martin Luther, provoking the Protestant Reformation. It was caused by Protestants in the north of Europe getting sick of the Catholic Church's corruption and the idea of buying your way into heaven. Even today, 500 years later, this divide is still very present in the Christian religion. Five more years passed, bring the world to 1522. In this year, Ferdinand Magellan became the first man to circumnavigate the world, although his crew did it for him, partially as he was ambushed and killed by natives in the Philippines. Four years later, the Portuguese, desperate for human labor, began transporting people from the African continent to their country just to force them to work, hence beginning the Atlantic slave trade. It would last another three centuries and see 15 million people be forcibly removed from their native continent of Africa. The next year, Nicholas Copernicus angered the Catholic Church in 1543 by suggesting that the earth was always revolving around the sun. Little did the Catholic Church know that their geocentrist belief would be replaced by the heliocentrist belief brought by Copernicus, which was the idea that the sun was at the center of our solar system. In 1582, the confusing Julian calendar was reinvented by others, including Pope Gregory XIII as the Gregorian calendar. Now, there would be a single day more every four years, as the sun and earth rotations aren't perfect. In 1608, the telescope as we know it was invented by Hans Lipperhe in the Netherlands. And by the next year, Galileo had been taking the lens from these telescopes and doing the exact opposite, observing tiny objects, creating the first microscope. Three years later, in 1612, a universal clock for the universe was proposed for all known planets. Galileo didn't really get his idea out there. Another seven years later, Johannes Kepler became the first person to accurately calculate distance between planets. In 1632, Galileo struck back again with his early theory of relativity regarding motion. Here are the rest of the important events very quickly. 1656, first pendulum clock. 
1665, discovery of organismal cells and invention of the idea of GDP. 1676, determination of the speed of light. 1687, Isaac Newton's laws of motion take off. 1700, beginning of the European colonization of the Americas and India. In 1735, first catalog of species. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the Renaissance. After the end of the Renaissance, the European continent, as well as others they colonized, would erupt into a series of wars and revolutions. Yet even in these hard times, great firsts would occur. Some of these firsts began in 1761, when the first sighting of Venus traveling next to the sun occurred, later allowing for the invention of astronomical units. Eight years later, in 1769, James Watt in England invented the steam engine, which will be very important later on. In 1770, James Hargreaves invented the spinning jenny, which would cause cotton production to skyrocket. Three years later, in 1773, French chemist Antoine Lavoisier created the first so-called law of conservation of mass, which would state that the amount of mass in a given place, object, or person cannot change. This line of creation would partially end in 1776, however, with the beginning of the bloody American Revolution. From 1776 to 1783, and would later form the new country of the United States of America. During this time, in 1778, the first nature conservation place, or precursor to national parks, was created in Mongolia in 1780. Spinning textile machines were invented, along with many other new machines. This would later begin the Industrial Revolution. In 1783, the first flight occurred in any form, with French scientists launching a high air balloon with a sheep, a duck, and a rooster in it. However, the balloon would crash 15 minutes later, killing all animals aboard. This flight would pave the way for future avial inventions. From 1789 to 99, France shattered in the French Revolution. During this time, King Louis the Sixteenth and Queen Marie Antoinette were overthrown and executed, along with as many as 17 thousand others, even children. Down in Italy in 1800, the first battery was invented by the ironically named Alessandro Volta. Eight years later, atoms were discovered. Back in Germany in 1817, Karl von Dries invented the bicycle. In 1821, the first rotary device was invented by Michael Faraday in hopes of getting general electricity, which did. In 1822, Francis Joseph Fourier discovered the greenhouse effect. Back across the channel in the UK in 1825, the first railroad was bought by George Stevenson. Back in France again, Nisa Forest Nietzsche took a first photograph. A little bleak, isn't it? Later in 1834, Charles Babbage invented the first analytical engine, which would lead to computers. Technology was about to leave Europe as well, because during 1838 in the UK, Eisenbarg Kingdom Brunel ship, the Great Western, became the first transatlantic steamer. This was the Industrial Revolution. After the end of the first half of the 19th century, another innovation event would occur, known as the Second Industrial Revolution. In 1848, Lord Kelvin invented the absolute temperature system. In 1850, Rudolf Clausius of Germany invented the principles of conservation of energy, which would lead to the laws of thermodynamics. Nine years later, in 1859, Charles Darwin famously wrote his book on the theory of evolution and later natural selection. Also this year, Florence Nightingale was becoming a pioneer by finding new ways to treat ill patients in Crimea. In 1860, Etienne Lenoir of Belgium created the factorial production of engines, which will lead to cars. From 1861 to 1865, the American Civil War was fought between the Union and Confederacy, eventually allowing for Abraham Lincoln of the Union to defeat the racist Confederates. In 1876, Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone, something we all use today. A year later, in 1877, Thomas Edison invented the phonograph, the first way to capture sound ever. He would perfect the light bulb two years later, not invent it. In 1880, the photograph was invented by Alexander Bell and Sumner Taintner. This is also when literacy passed 20% of the world's population. In 1881, Louis Pasteur of 
France invented the first vaccine. In 1882, the first power stations were opened in London and New York City. There would also be hydroelectric power stations this year as well. In 1884, the first solar panels were created by Charles Fritz. And we now reach a dark time period. From 1885 to 1914, European powers would descend on Africa for colonization, now known as the Scramble for Africa. In 1887, Carl Benz invented the first car with an engine. He also founded Mercedes-Benz. Then, in 1887, the speed of light was calculated and wind turbines were invented by James Blythe. In British colonies in 1890, the first sewage tanks were built. In 1893, New Zealand historically gave women the right to vote, becoming the first country to do so. After, in 1895, Guglielmi Macaroni invented the first radio. Also this year, the first movie was shown and x-rays were invented. Back in France, in 1896, Henry Becquerel discovered radioactivity. A year later, in 1897, the first electron was discovered by Joseph Thompson. In 1899 and 1900, Planck's laws were created by Max Planck to explain measurements. That was the Second Industrial Revolution. After a long four centuries, humanity was almost ready to leave the modern period. During its last 45 years, the world would change forever, sometimes good and sometimes catastrophically. In 1901, Queen Victoria died, marking the end of the Victorian period of the UK, a hard time seeing large amounts of reliance on child labor for work, mostly in coal mines. After reforms, finally children would no longer be sent into these awful mines. In 1903, Wilbur and Orville Wright flew the first airplane flight in human history. I made a whole video on such already. In 1904, the previously mentioned Lord Kelvin discovered that black matter had no electromagnetic connections by using cadavers. A year later, the infamous Albert Einstein developed his theory of relativity, which includes how energy and mass are related, represented in possibly the most famous mathematical equation in history, e equals mc square, the lengthening and contractioning of people and objects, and more. In 1907, Leo Backlund of the U.S. invented plastic, for the better and worse of history to come. In 1909, Robert Peary and Matthew Henson, who became an idol for the African-American population, of the U.S. became the first to reach the North Pole, with Roald Amundsen of Norway beating the British to the South Pole two years later, all but two died. On April 15, 1912, possibly the most famous ship in history sank, the Titanic, killing over 2,000 people and inspiring the most expensive movie ever made. In 1913, Henry Ford invented the assembly line for factories, which would rapidly increase production speeds. From 1914 to 1918, the world saw its largest war to date, the Great War or World War I. During it, 20 million people died. After it, the Spanish flu would claim even more lives. In 1915, Marie Curie essentially invented the X-ray, something which became a staple in the medical trade. After, in 1916, Einstein created his theory of general relativity, which is not as famous as his theory of special relativity, however. In 1917, Russia became communist after the Red Army defeated the White Army during the Russian Civil War. From 1918 to 1920, the world saw the deaths of about 100 million people from the Spanish flu, or influenza pandemic, as the Spanish demanded people call it. In 1919, Jagadish Bose, a Bangladeshi physicist, discovered plant nervous systems. The same year, the first radio transmission occurred. In 1922, Alexander Friedman of Russia created his theory of a rapidly expanding universe, which was considered nonsense at the time. In 1924, the U.S. Army performed the first aerial circumnavigation of the world. This is also the year when Erwin Schrodinger of Switzerland discovered quantum particles. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the beginning of the 20th century. After passing 1925, the world experienced the end of the modern period. 
in which innovation went beyond comprehension for many people. Here are its highlights. In 1926, television was invented by John Logie Bard, and the League of Nations met at the convention to suppress the slave trade and slavery to discuss how to end slavery in countries which still hadn't outlawed it. In 1927, a race behind a horse and a race car was won by the car, cementing the use of cars over horses. And this was a year when Germany's Werner Heisenberg discovered all particles have a constant product of position and momentum. In 1928, Paul Dirac of the UK predicted an antimatter in electrons, now known as position particles. Also this year, plasma was discovered by an American named Irving Langmuir, and Alexander Fleming created the first antibiotic, penicillin. The next year, the world entered the Great Depression, which would cause a star stock market crash for the next decade. In 1930, Wolfgang Pauli of Austria discovered the smallest particle, neutrinos. However, in 1932, James Chadwick would discover what neutrinos make up, neutrons, which would become a very important discovery. In 1935, Arthur Tansley of the UK developed the idea of an ecosystem. Then, in 1939, the first turbojet aircraft was invented by von Ohain, and that year, Adolf Hitler would invade Austria, beginning World War II. From 1939 to 1945, 75 million people would lose their lives and about 10 million of those were Jews, and were targeted by Hitler's despicable ideology. Later, Hitler would kill himself. Mussolini would be executed, and Hirohito would fade into the shadows. In 1941, the first binary computer was brought forth by Konrad Zuse of Germany. Computers would improve in 1944, when British engineer Tommy Flowers made it possible for them to become programmable. On June 8, 1945, the U.S. bombed Hiroshima, killing over 100,000 people. This was one of the reasons the League of Nations was replaced by the newly founded United Nations, with the goal of keeping world peace possible. This year was also when Alan Turing of Great Britain invented the calculator. In 1947, the first supersonic flight was made by Chuck Yeager. In 1948, the first transistor radio was invented by Bell Labs in the U.S., and the U.N. made its Proclamation of Human Rights, stating everyone had equal rights. And in 1949, the barcode was invented by Norman Woodland and Bernard Silver. The next period of time would see a new advancement in just about everything imaginable. We now reach the technological revolution. In 1951, the UN declared that genocide would become a crime under international law. In 1953, James Crick discovered the genetic code of DNA and how it works. Also this year, Tenzing Norgan and Edmund Hillary became the first people to summit Mount Everest. In 1954, in the USSR, the first power plant was opened. Later, in 1955, the atomic clock was created by Louis Essen of the UK. After, freight transport was made by Malcolm McLean. Back in the Soviet Union, in 1957, Sputnik 1 was launched, becoming the first satellite. The same year, Sputnik 2 was launched, this time with a dog in it named Laika. Tragically, she burned to death while on return to Earth. In 1957, the UN signed the Antarctic Treaty, preventing anyone from owning or mining the continent. In 1960, Jacques Picard and Don Walsh reached the bottom of the ocean, known as the Mariana Trench. Also this year, laser beams were invented, oral contraceptives were approved, and the Beatles formed their legendary band. In 1961, Yuri Gagarin became the first person to travel to space. Then in 1964, Peter Higgs of England discovered the origin of mass via particle physics. In 1965, the UN met at the International Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination to try starting to fight racism. In 1967, Andrei Sakharov discovered an asymmetry between matter and antimatter. In 1967, the UN signed the Outer Space Treaty, allowing anyone to explore and banning all weapons in it. In 1969, Neil Armstrong became the first person to walk on the moon. In 1970, Stephen Hawking proved that the birth of the universe was in a singularity. This year is also when binary code storage was created. In 1972, the first recombinant DNA was created by Paul Berg. The next year, natural capital economics were made possible by Ernst Schumacher. Also this year, the global expectancy for life passed 60 for the first time in history. In 1975, the first modern computer, the Kenback One, was devised by John Blinker Banker. 
this is also the year when many countries met at the Convention on International Trade and Endangered Species of Wildlife and Flora, or CITES, to protect animals and plant species. However, technology was about to change even more. It was about to become digital. After 1975, technology had passed its expectations and its zenith. It would not stop becoming any less incredible. This event is known as the Technological Revolution. Not everything in it was digital, however. In 1977, natives in Kenya, tired of poverty because of natural hardships linked to deforestation, created the Green Belt Movement. To this day, it has worked to secure environmental protection in Kenya and beyond. In 1978, at the Argentinian Esperanza Basin in Antarctica, Emilio Palma became the first person to be born on the Antarctic continent, solely to argue for Argentina's claim in Antarctica, although under the Antarctic Treaty, which Argentina signed, it is not recognized. Also this year, the first person was born via in vitro fertilization or outside the body in the UK. In 1979, the standard model in quantum mechanics was complete. In 1980, Mount St. Helens erupted and smallpox was eradicated, becoming the first disease to be completely removed. In 1981, the first case of HIV or AIDS was diagnosed and would become a devastating international issue. In 1983, the internet was activated for the first time in the US and genetically modified plants were first created. In 1984, astronaut Bruce McCandless made the first untethered spacewalk. In 1985, the first hole in the ozone layer created by humans was discovered. In 1986, the first space station, the Sinsti Commission's Mir Space Station, owned by USSR, was launched. This is also when the human population passed 5 billion people. In 1987, the Montreal Protocol was enacted by the UN, banning hydrochlorofluorocarbons to help the ozone layer. This is also when the Brundtland Report was made by the UN to advocate for clean technological improvements. 1998, James Henson gave a testimony to the US Congress of Worries of Climate Change. Then in 1989, the WWW, or World Wide Web, was invented by Tim Barners-Lee. In 1990, the Hubble Space Telescope was launched. During 1992, the first exoplanets, that is Earth-like planets, were found. These first two exoplanets found were found to be over 2,000 light years away, very far away. 1992 also saw the UN meet at the Convention on Biological Diversity in hopes of protecting rare flora and fauna. In 1993, Francis Arnold became the first to tune enzyme functions by evolution, a great feat for the time. Then, in 1994, Jeff Bezos founded Amazon, which would grow to become one of the most valuable companies in the world, allowing for Jeff Bezos to later on become the richest person in the world. In 1995, the Bose-Einstein compound was found by the NIST, and world fish production reached its highest point in history. In 1996, Dolly the sheep became the first animal to be cloned. In the duration of 1997, NASA's Sojourner rover landed on Mars, becoming the first human-made object on the red planet. In 1998, Larry Page and Sergey Brin created Google as a school project, which later became one of the largest companies in the world. In 2000, calorie deficiency reached 15% of the global population as a result of climate change and sea levels began to rise by 3 millimeters a year. Even after the world adopted digital technology, it still wasn't done changing. One big new change would be a new century. Following the year 2000, the world would transition into one of its, if not its most consequential centuries, which is ongoing, the 21st century. In 2001, Jimmy Wales and Larry Singer founded Wikipedia, which would become the largest encyclopedia in the world. Also, in 2001, where the tragic terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center on September 11th in 2004, Mark Zuckerberg launched Facebook, unaware of how large it would become in years to come. By 2007, half of the human population had begun living in cities. In 2008, the Great Recession reached its worst point, caused by the failure of banks. And also in 2008, the world had begun using 10 trillion megabytes a month. 
In 2010, the first self-replicating cell was created. In 2011, the UN signed a resolution to try to help solve disputes over LGBTQ plus rights, and the number of democracies peaked at 101. In 2012, the Higgs boson was discovered, and Voyager 1 left the solar system. Then, in 2015, the number of trees was estimated to be at 3 billion, over 4 trillion less than the beginning of human history. And the UN Paris Agreement was signed to limit gaseous emissions to combat climate change. In 2016, glacial melt rates tripled. Then, in 2017, the amount of plastic waste became 10 times more than the human biomass. In 2018, Google created the first autonomously driving car and taxi service. In 2019, the first photo of a black hole was taken, and the first case of COVID-19 was detected in Wuhan, China. In 2020, the highest temperature in history was recorded in Death Valley, California. Bush fires ravaged Australia, and the U.S. faced a tragically divisive presidential election. Then, in 2021, the COVID-19 vaccine was distributed for the first time, which brings us to the present. History can be anything as people interpret it, as people are the ones who change it. History is never predictable and never unpredictable. History will change the past as well as the present and the future, because we as a species, make history, and history makes us. History cannot function without one other thing, however. Time. Time is history, and history is time, history of Earth, the universe, and humanity.